Welcome to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff. This week, I'm your host, Joe, and I have a ton of phenomenal interviews from Murph 2019. We're doing all the interviews in two episodes this time instead of releasing them piecemeal. And this is the After Dark episode. So this is after tacos, after the fabled keg of dank meme was tapped so everybody was having a really really good time so keep that in mind as you're listening through it chris and aaron were both super excited at the beginning of the episode this was a phenomenal year for murph this year there were so many tool changers there were so many great printers it was very very prevalent of the idea that Rip rap is not dying. It's not going anywhere. So this idea that people have in their head that rep rap is dead and it's all Chinese printers, I, that was not the case this year. There were more people than ever, at least double than any of the biggest years for Murph. And it was just absolutely insane. Wall to wall people the whole weekend. And Saturday night was no joke. We had an absolute blast. My favorite part of the whole weekend, though, was meeting all of you guys, all of the members of the 35 Listeners Club. It was so much fun to have people that I didn't know come up to the podcast and make jokes about the podcast. So you guys that are are listening and that you came to Murph, I love you so much. It was so much fun to meet you guys. I can't wait to meet you at Earth and at Murph 2020. So with that... Uh, we're going to roll right into the interviews because there's a lot of them and um, everybody was was so phenomenal just like coming on and talking about their experiences at RepRap and how much they love the community and why. So um, yeah, with that, here is Saturday Night Murph After Dark 2019. All right. So welcome to Makers on Tap, the podcast for makerspace directors. Drink and talk about making stuff. Yeah. And uh, tonight we are here at Murph. Murph After Dark. Murph After Dark. It is 10.20 p.m. at Murph, which means we're starting this podcast 20 minutes later than we told everyone we would, which is exactly how we do shit. Exactly when I have to pee. We have been drinking for three and a half hours. We have burned through the fabled keg of dank meme. We have burned through half a case of zombie dust. We have burned through half a fifth of Malort. And Kirkland vodka. And Kirkland vodka. As we do. As we do. In fact, I am going to drink a shot of Malort right now uh, because I haven't done it in two years and I can't because, remember how terrible because it is. Because Joe hates himself. Oh, you're going to love that, my friend. It's as, it's, it's as, it's as horrible as I remember. God, it's like, why? It, it's like rubbing alcohol and sweat socks and it just, just pain. Is Brian? No, what does that taste? Is Brian and him a part of this? They're like, Brian. they're like the very outskirts Brian. of the show. Brian and all of you. Brian, if you remember Brian from the here. body jewelry episode, you he, are a part of this. He, he. Why is there more alcohol in that cup? Claudio. Oh. What, what does Malort coming. taste like? Uh, I think Malort tastes like brushing your teeth and then drinking orange juice and then immediately chasing it with Aquanet. The, the, this, this is, is only the community the version of Makers on Tap. We're doing the round table thing like we did like on our third episode, but we're having everyone talk about Murph instead of River City Labs. And everyone has to pee. And <laughs> I peed before the podcast. I, I need to do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> so... Okay. Yeah, Chris, you start. I'm. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna start. You're gonna start. The fuck? <laughs> well, you took the mic like you were gonna start. I took the mic because you had to go take a so. piss. <laughs> start. So, what are we talking about? Why you love Murph? Why it's important? Why whatever, whatever you want to talk about at the end of Murph 2019? Cool. <laughs> there you go. No, Murph, is, like it's fucking dope. Like. It's amazing the community that's here. Like that's that's part of it, dude. We okay. 
Let's talk about this right off the fucking bat, because I'm the one who's got the mic. The fact that we fucking made a kegerator work with 3D printed parts. Like, yes, let's yes, put that in yes. the fucking perspective. We had a kegerator here because Chris we told drunk. everybody that we were going to have a kegerator here. And I'm going to curse a lot because I'm fucking drunk. Chris is drunk. <laughs> so we had a kegerator here because we promised there was going to be a kegerator, and we loved it. And the kegerator didn't ship with a fucking O-ring. And so the kegerator... O-rings. O-rings, yes. The kegerator shot through the top, soaked Joe's laptop, which is a fucking thing. <laughs> Apparently, then, it still works. <laughs> luckily. And then all of a sudden, we come up Don't with... Like, away, well, let's either go to Menards and try and fix this thing. But no, let's print it out of Cheetah and just fix it. Which and is so a TPU made by NinjaFlex. It's... Freaking awesome! We printed an O-ring and fixed a kegerator. We won Murph. <laughs> we, indeed, <laughs> we made it freaking work, <laughs> which is so cool. Cause like one of the guys came over, got calibers, took the measurements, modeled it up. Another one of the guys got it on his printer and freaking printed it in, in Cheetah. Like the fact that that even happened in a community space is freaking incredible. Like it, that's it, why I love. Murph. When I say one, when he says one of the guys, the guys are Josh. Josh has been on the podcast in the past. He is part of River City Labs. We fix everything. Speaking of River City Labs, Fred. Hi. Glad to meet you. Glad <laughs> to meet you. Why are you, here? Why are you here? I'm here to have fun. I love the <laughs> love coming to Murph because there's all kinds of cool people here, all kinds of cool things to see, and good food and good drink, and tacos. And tacos. And, and tacos. <laughs> I, tacos all right. indeed. All, all right. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> uh, she'll come back. All right, Frank. Give me, give me a recap Hi. of why you're here. I am here because this is a collection of people that do interesting things, but they're here without an ego. Yeah. There's a bunch of big names, but they don't care that they're big names. Right. They enjoy being here and they enjoy talking about what they're doing. Yeah. That's what Murph is all about. No, it's sharing it, ideas without, you know, being an asshole. It, I mean, it is cool. It, like, there's so many like big YouTubers here, and there's so many big just printer companies here, and everybody's here because it's open, and everybody just wants to talk, and that's so fucking rad. It's just so, and it's like, I remember coming here my first year five years ago. I met Joseph Prusa. Yeah. It was like at first I was like, you're Joseph Prusa. He's like. It's Joe. And it's, they're people. We're all people. And we all do the same thing for fun. Yep. So despite how we see each other ranked up socially, we're all the same group. Well, and, and no one, you know, forces themselves upon you being, I'm better than you. And it's like, no, it's a free exchange of ideas. Yeah. No, that's fucking rad, dude. Yeah, that's 100%. All right, who's up next? Justin. So, uh, what is this? Just like Murph experiences. What? Murph experiences. Tell us who you are. Yeah. Who so are I'm uh, you? Justin Nesserot. Uh I write BotQ. B O T Q E U E. Yeah, it is. I totally don't correct people at Murph just because it's. What it's, is BotQ? Uh, BotQ is a cluster controller for a 3D printer farms. So, like Lowsbot has 150 3D printers. Uh, they need to run it in a way that they can actually just say, "I need 800 of these parts. Please make them." Okay, thanks. Why wouldn't they just run 150 instances of Octoprint? They actually did that before I, um, b before we uh, switched to BotQ. And I, if I recall correctly, their, their numbers were they were running like five days a week, nine to five, right? And I, I'm pretty sure they're running like 24 hours a day, five days a week, potentially seven. I wouldn't be surprised if it was seven at this point. Um, just because it's like way more efficient to, to say, I need this many number of parts as opposed to saying, Go to this Octoprint instance, load part, prints, right? So, um, it, like, Gina's a good friend of mine, right? So, like, nothing against Octoprint. I actually I, I use Octoprint at my own hackerspace because it's very easy to get people set up on and using. But uh. So why are you at Murph? Um, I'm at Murph for a couple reasons. One is to give people stickers because who doesn't love stickers, right? Like, everyone loves stickers. Um, and part of it's just because, like, you get to meet a lot of people in the community that do really cool things. And like, it's like, hey, I follow you on Twitter for like the last several years. I'm that creeper that likes all your posts. Congratulations. Um, but the other part that I, re and I really love that they, they shut down Murph to the public at one point. 
because all of the makers who don't get to see each other very often get to, you know, see each other, right? Throughout the day, it's like, hey, and give great hugs. Joe, Joe over here uh, loves giving good hugs. What's your name, Parker? All right. And, uh, like, you know, it's, it's funny. You go up to, like, exhibitor booth, and you see the people start going into the spiel or whatever. They're like, here's my product. Here's the thing I sell. And it's like, no, no, no. We're cool. I'm a maker as well. You don't have to do the spiel. Rest your voice. We're good. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. So. so, Parker, why are you at Murph? I am at Murph because Chris Riley of Chris's Basements and I happen to be working at, on Snappy. Is that a brand? It's his YouTube channel. Okay. Chris's Basement. Um, Chris is a great guy, real smart, uh, does some great stuff on YouTube, and he and I happened to mesh while working on Snappies at the same time. Didn't know each other before. Got to talking online. He's like, oh, I'm going to be at Murph. I said, oh, well, I've never heard of Murph. What's that? Found out about it, and I thought, oh, I used to live there. How didn't I know about this? So I decided I was going to show up and bring a Snappy, and so I did, and it's been great. I have never experienced this kind of community before, and it's been phenomenal. It's amazing, isn't it? It is mind-blowing. I was just awash with the ingenuity and the amount of celebrities within the 3D Dude, printing community that so show amazing. up. It's so amazing. Just being starstruck, seeing the people you watch on the computer here oh, walking around. You know? Absolutely. Uh, when I first walked in the door this morning, I immediately saw Tom of, uh, like, honestly, something, isn't I, I have no idea how to properly pronounce his last name. I always call him Sen Ladder. Yeah. But I saw him and uh, Joe, the 3D printing professor. They were the first pre people I saw when I walked in the door, and it was incredible. And I've tracked down everybody and gotten a picture with them except for Tom. <laughs> and least of all, I did not expect to see Joseph Prusha here all the way from the Czech Republic. I mean, he's here every year. Is he really? Yeah. He, he's been here since actually the first year. I'm pretty sure he was here 2013, the first year. Yeah, that is incredible. Yeah. And his name's been on everything ever since. I mean, I guess I know what I have to look forward to <laughs> next year now. And, so, and I think the most unexpected part was beer from Matter Hackers. Dude. I did not expect people to be walking around with the beer. Hey, where'd you get that? Oh, the couch at uh, Matter Hackers um, booth? Like, you're kidding, right? I'm no, sorry. really. Did you not get beer at the Makers on Tap? Kegerator? This year? No, I haven't yet because so, I never saw anybody pouring from it. I thought it was decorative. That's because Chris wasn't doing his job right. Anyways, we have a kegerator back there. Yes, it had beer. It might still have root beer in it. It's free for you to take. This might be a thing for us. Like we makers on tap brings the party. I'm okay with that. If you get makers and beer together, it's going to be a good time. And you guys have blended it perfectly. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Quite honestly, I had no, I get, no idea you guys existed until a few hours ago. A lot of people didn't. So here we are. Now that I know, <laughs> I can't live without it. <laughs> Thank you. So, I appreciate and that And I so will much. be bringing my own goblet if that's okay. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it may or may not be Iron Man themed. I know the people listening at home can't see me, but I am wearing a Stark Industries shirt, and I'm a huge Iron Man fan, slowly printing my own armor for it. I will come next year with an Iron Man goblet. The more the better. Absolutely, man. So, <laughs> Renee, why did you come to Murph? I came to Murph. Um, we came with, uh, I came with uh, some other folks from my uh, hackerspace in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, I heard a lot of cool things, and I wanted to uh, see it firsthand. And it's awesome. So you had a pretty sweet printer set up in the other building. Well, can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, um, it is a um, it is a custom Kozel built on uh, built to use the uh, Clipper firmware. Um, I've been working on this thing since last July, and I'm uh, testing out a number of other things in it, such as a new touchscreen design and some stuff involving um, other parts involving things like uh, custom caps and uh, feet and things like that. Nice. Also, a new frame design that's using 2040s and is supposed to be a new type of Kozel Max design that's going to be awesome once it's finished. I hope to have it next year. So you had a bunch of what elastic bands on elastic bands on a lot of the what was that effectors or the the, the, the towers? Yeah. 
Oh, those. I forgot to include that. That's an important part of the printer. Yeah. Um, I use something called a flying extruder, which is a type of... Um, which is a type of extruder that instead of it being like a traditional Bowden where it's like set way off on the frame, it's uh, or set up like a direct where it's like sitting right on top and adding a bunch of mass to your um, inst to your uh, carriage. In a Delta world, we call that end effectors, but okay. because it's more rope body professional sound. But the um, but with the uh, flying extruder. The flying extruder sits on um, elastic bands with a um, with these little loops that hook onto the towers, onto the uh, parts on the carriages that go to the towers on uh, mm -hmm. deltas. If you use that, you can have the weight be for the extruder be unsprung, like uh, like a car suspension. Yeah. When you do that, you can have a Bowden tube that's only about maybe five or six centimeters long. That's practically direct in terms of hysteresis and torque and all that other yeah. physics-y stuff. That's awesome. So once you do that, you can drive fast. You can drive really fast. It looks super weird. I can. It, lo oh, it looks like you're, you're printing via hair ties. And I'm like, how can that be good? Those are actually a Home Depot uh, bu cargo bungee straps. <laughs> but I can drive at 100 millimeters per second with... Um, with Pet G, and like, I'm not even being constrained by the extruder. I mean, you're running Clipper, right? Yes. So it's doing all of your like stepper generation stuff. Yes, that's neat. Um, Clipper run. Ooh, uh, Clipper is running the um, kinematics for the actual printer section. Yeah. And the MCU is acting as a. If you think of your 3D printer as a human body, your um, the MCU, your ramps board, your smoothie board, you, et cetera, is acting like the uh, hindbrain of a person. And um, the Raspberry Pi, or if you, like, I'm working on a, a Latte Panda base board that's coming up soon. Nice. So, X86. Those are cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, once I do that, that one's working as, like, the equivalent of, like, your um, your forebrain, the part that does your language and your speaking, and not the and the MCU's doing the part like keeping your heart beating and making sure your liver processes all this liquor that I just drank. So, bear with me. You, you and me both. <laughs> but yeah, the hindbrain can do the liver processing job. The main part can try to talk about this stuff, and both jobs can do the things that they're good at. Awesome, that's so cool. Biomimetics. That's so cool. Go, John. Go. John Ollie, how, how has this weekend gone for you as an organizer? It's been pretty awesome. That's a very generic term. So more people, more tacos, more printers, more filament. So we filled more out fun. both this building and the accessory building we normally use. Yep. How do you feel about that? I think we're going to need a bigger box next year. So we I agree. think we have like 23,000 square feet, and we're looking at like somewhere in the mid 40,000 square feet for next year. Do you think we'll be in the same building or like different? Definitely a different building. Different probably building. the same complex here. They've yeah. got some other buildings, but it won't be open until two to three weeks later on in the year. So sounding like next year's Murph is going to be mid-April. So we're going to avoid the snow? No, it's Indiana. <laughs> it, it could snow just as easily as it could be 70. There's also global warming, so we don't snow anymore in the Midwest. It's a, it's a myth. It's a myth. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> Roger, how you doing? I am doing great. Yeah? yeah? My first rep rap. Had a great time. Car race was absolutely worth every bit of the work I put into that car. Absolutely, had man. A, had, a, had a blast. Um, venue was great. Uh, went over to the other building where the Primo guys are and met the TH3D guys, and that was really cool. Hung out with them for a little while. Yeah. And uh, just awesome. We'll do it again. Absolutely, We're man. We're going to need a bigger boat. I mean, building. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Something right. like that. Right, Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Who's up next? Anybody? Bring it on. Bring it on. What's your name, man? I'm Joe from Project R3D. Joe, how are you doing tonight, man? Doing well, how are you? Doing good. What do you, what do you find so fascinating? What brings you back to Rep Rep Fest? Well, to, for, this year is mainly to show off the awesome community behind the Railcore. Yeah. Um, 
Dude, I there's been so many people who have been coming up and just talking about Railcore. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think I bugged everybody about it. This <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. It's, it's a I may, cool I may manufacture yeah, them, well, but uh, I probably shouldn't um, bug people The people, people who actually designed <laughs> it, uh, Steve no, White and it's, it's a really Tony, cool project. they did an amazing yeah, job. Well, and then fun. last year we um, came with our T-Series uh, printers that we, we still manufacture, but like right now it's like we found the community we want to be a part of. We used to go to all the maker fairs, and we used to push like distributors and all that other stuff, and it's like, that's not what I want to be anymore. I want to be, I want to be the community, and I want to back the community, and I want to help create the community that I want to be a part of. Yeah. There's so many communities that fall apart because they just don't have, they lose the vision. And it's like we gotta keep that. And what's awesome is Murph is that. Like, we come here and you walk around, and I think I've helped so many people just like do this, tweak something on their printer or something like that. And it's like, there's a bunch of people sitting at our printers looking at it. And it's like, feel free to look, but I'm going to go see this awesome thing over here because <laughs> I, I want to see what they're doing. I want to yeah. see how they made things better just because they're tinkering in their garage. Right, they're right. Just, there's, there's amazing people here. And it's like, there's people from all around the world, people flying just to come see. Last year, we had someone from the Czech Republic fly in and he flew into West Virginia because he didn't know how far West Virginia was from... <laughs> from uh, Washington, Indiana. So he's like, I landed, and then I had to drive eight hours to get here. He's like, because on the map, it's only this big. And at home, it's only this big, and it takes a half hour. Jeez. <laughs> it's like, but he came. Yeah. He still rented the car. He didn't get back on the plane and fly home. But he knew he, when he came here, he was coming to like-minded people, and it's awesome. That's amazing, dude. Oh, so, yeah, it's, it's awesome here. We awesome. would love to talk to you more about it. We'll have to have you back on to interview. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Stuff. I'm right down the road from you guys, so. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> have an awesome one. We love you, man. Thank you for coming on. Who's up next? You coming on? Yeah. Sam, dude. How's it going? It's going good, man. How you doing? Yeah, I'm having a fantastic time. <laughs> How are you like what do you what do you love about Murph so far? This is your first one, right? This is my first Murph, yeah. What do you what have you loved about everything that's going on? How here? welcoming the community is, how much cool stuff seems to be going on. I just every booth I go up to, you know, there's something just that really just blows my mind and stuff. I like seeing all the V6s around, obviously, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gotta represent E3D, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> But no, but awesome, man. What what is something that you want to see that's uh, that you haven't gotten to see yet? I don't know. I have had a good chance to explore, so I've seen a lot of stuff. I'm I'm really excited to see the future iterations for Tool Changer. Yep. We are in the very early stages of the Tool Changer now. We've had our beta, beta's out the way, and now we're just releasing the product in about two months or so. But now it's like we're encouraging people to mess about as much as possible. We want to see some crazy tool heads going on and stuff like that. And I'm just excited to see what the community wants to do with that stuff. That's awesome. Well, hey, thank you for coming on, man. No, thank you very much. Glad to have you back on. An honor. Yeah. I love your podcast. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, who wants to come up next? Bring it on. All right, what's your name, man? I'm Matt from Inside the Mind of Matt. Uh, Matt, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. What has been the thing that you've loved most about Murph this year? Um... Everything. I mean, it's just the community, the gathering, the people, like-minded, just being able to talk about what I have a passion about without somebody trying to get away from me. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it, really, it really has been this like cool community experience of just people coming together and being able to talk about all the cool projects that we all have in mind. Absolutely. What are you Sharing and learning and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Are you looking any for, forward to anything next year? Do you got any projects that you got lined up already? Well, um, this last year was my first year, and I didn't bring anything. I just kind of like brought myself and yeah. presented myself, and uh, there was like an interest in actually what I was doing. So right. this year, I kind of like brought representation of what I work in, which is metal casting with the 3D printing and, and stuff. So absolutely, I actually had some product to show, and but for next year, I've really had something that. Um, I printed a while ago, and I haven't had a chance to finish that I'd actually like to be my Murph presentation, that, and that's uh, my Stormtrooper costume that I, ah. I have it printed. I just have to like paint it and kind yep. of fit it to my body and stuff. So over the next year, I think I'll get motivated and have that to, to walk around as a Stormtrooper for next year. There are so many people that have been cosplaying this year, and it makes me so excited because like, that is one of the things that I love to do as well. And I think I'm going to be cosplaying next year as well. So that that's awesome to hear that more people are getting involved into the costume play and all that kind of stuff with 3D printing. So, hey, thank you for coming out. Thank, thank you. you for coming on the I'll podcast. I'll make sure I listen to the podcast more. Absolutely. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you so Stop much, Stop it man. inside the mind of Matt on uh, YouTube.
Yeah. <laughs> Have a good one. All right. I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing tonight, man? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Martin. Martin? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and what, what have you loved about Murph so far? Uh, meeting all the people. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and a Twitter account and been interacting with people on Twitter and YouTube yeah. comments and seeing and meeting all, all the people that have been in interaction in, over the internet. So coming here and, and seeing the actual face and having interactions, that's the uh, most value for me. Yeah. So, so and people coming to my booth and seeing what I'm doing with my landscapes that I'm doing YouTube channels on and yeah. uh, uh, YouTube videos on. And they say, I have seen your videos and, and, and people that I've never seen in real life and they love what I'm doing and that's awesome to get the feedback direct face to face. So, no, absolutely. Yeah. There's been so many, like, it's really cool. We've had some of our fans come as well. Yeah. And, like people we, we just met and it's like, Oh, it's so cool to get like a face to the name, and it's like yeah, this yeah. amazing experience. Yeah, often you just know the Twitter handle, and that's not even the name, just a acronym for something. And right, yeah, and then oh, this is John or or Ron or something. And <laughs> that's no, awesome. To, it is. It's so cool. Are you looking forward to anything happening next year? Uh, next year, I, I don't know what what's. I, I really like what's happening with all the crazy types of printers, the the, yeah. the mechanics, and, and people are coming up with new. New mechanics with printers, with the tool changer and all, all the crazy stuff that's going on. Right, right. And seeing how that uh, develops and makes it into a product that people can purchase at some point. With the, like with the rail core right. becoming a kit now and really want to get that one at some point but to save up for it. But, but seeing projects like that come to life, uh, so many like uh, people, uh, their minds are just crazy. And after a few years, there will be awesome things. Uh, oh, yeah. Seeing, seeing all the awesome, f it's like a birthplace of great ideas. So. Well, and I think so much is going to come from the Tool Changer beta. Like, yeah. with, with, with more people getting their hands on it, with more people having the ability to do so many cool things with the tool heads, it's just going to make, it's, it's so much more than 3D printing. Like, there's so many more applications. So yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing. Yeah, it's like a, like a adrenaline shot into the community to right. give, it, give this platform and people will build up on it. So it's awesome to see. So yeah. Well, hey, it was great yeah. talking yeah. to you, man. Yeah. Have a good one. Enjoy yeah. the rest of the convention. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Who's up next? Well, come on. Hi. Wow. How you doing, man? How's it going? Good. Bring it up here. Um. What? So, what have you enjoyed about uh, Murph so far? Well, I was able to come with uh, my makerspace. Number one. Yeah. Number two was that I was able to see all of the YouTubers that I watch and get my pictures taken with them. You know, so that's been really awesome. Yeah, nice. And it's, you? I man, I like I talked about my experience with the kegerator and just all the cool people that I've gotten to meet so far is just right. It's a great community. It really yeah. is. Yeah, like, it's been really awesome enough. for my first time. Just yeah. unbelievable. Do you think you're gonna be coming back next year? Yep. <laughs> and guess what? I'm gonna be back with a big project. Oh, do you got it something in mind already? I already do. Oh, can you give us a little tease? Can you give us a little tease of what you're thinking about? Yeah, I was thinking about uh, multiple prints of figures. Okay. To where I'm going to pose them, and they're going to be doing a like an animation. It's going to be four or five figures in a row, and it's going to be of an action. Oh, okay. <laughs> so doing a whole scene with different right, figures. Right. Do, do, okay. Do, 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 do. No, that'll be awesome, man. <laughs> that'll be awesome. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. Yep. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Look forward to talking to you more. All right, who's up next? Eric. Eric? Come here. All right. <laughs> Who are you? I'm just an old dude. <laughs> no, I'm uh, Eric Lean. So, for people who don't know, Eric has been like a pillar of the 3D printing like rap rap community for six years. Yeah, you know, like years? 2013 when I first started trying to design my own 3D printer without ever having actually seen one in person yes. or operated one. And I was like, hey, good time to learn SolidWorks. Yeah. Yeah, so we met at the second annual MRF. And yeah. it, every year we just we reconnect based on ridiculous 3D printers and <laughs> Eric's incredible ability to tune extrusion and beautiful prints and... Like my ability to just be ridiculous, I, I don't even know. And uh, it's just blossomed into this friendship over the years. And like, you are why I love RepRap. 
<laughs> it, well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, it, it, this is Joe. I jumped in. Sorry, I didn't reintroduce myself. But the man of the mustache, the one, the only. Yeah. It, like, like the people like like Eric are why I love this community, and why I love Murph, and and coming to this event every year. So, yeah, the the 2014 Murph. I remember coming out here. Uh, Gary, someone that I met on Google Plus, said, "Hey, they're having a little get together down in Goshen, Indiana. You want to come down? It's going to be 3D printing." And again, I was still feeling my way through. Like my prints at the time, like. That I was posting on Google Plus, I look back now and I'm like, I, I posted that, did I? Yeah. I was I was really proud of that turd. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna pick so many people's brains, it, yeah. and it was wonderful meeting people like Joe, uh, you know, Nicholas Seward. Uh, you oh know, man, Nick. Yeah, and and all the friends that I've made along the way through the the soon to be dead Google Plus, but. You know, Martin Bondius, who I've visited his family in Sweden and, you know, through, you know, Alex Lee, who I visited his family in California, the community around 3D printing is what kept me in it. If it was just printing Pokemon for my kids long ago, I would have moved on to something else. But the, the people yeah. here, these are my people. This, yes. is my, this is my nerd family. This is my, the imaginary friends my wife talks about that I yeah. get to finally visit once a year. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I am exactly the same way. Like I start planning for Murph on uh, Murph Day negative one, like <laughs> in and that's the that's my next year. Yeah. So, what do you, what are you looking forward to next year? Ah, uh, you know I I don't know because I've you know by this point now I've designed from scratch like seven FDM 3D printers like either with in consort with other people that I've met in the community or just for myself and so like I, I love designing and building the printers but really I think next year I might not even bring out a printer I'm just going to come here and be with the people that make me want to stay in this community. The, the community is what what I love about you know, I'm sure I'll probably convince the wife to let me take over, like, you know, the spare bedroom, and I'll probably build something else. But it, <laughs> for the most part, it's just going to be so I stay active enough that the people that are here stay in my life yeah. and I stay in contact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, thank you for all of your con contributions, and thank you for just being an awesome person. And, uh, you know, being in my life, it, it, yeah. you've been a huge inspiration in my designs yeah. and keeping me going. So, yep. and, and your crazy antics have made it exciting the whole way. And I, I enjoy the infectious smile that this man brings to anybody around him. So if you've never had the pleasure of meeting him in person, you got to make it out to the Peoria Maker. Uh, yeah, Maker Fest. When is that coming up? Uh, that is the second weekend of August. It's the second Saturday. Yep. And uh, it's it's a huge art fair and uh, maker fair combined. Yep. And we also have the region's largest bot brawl. So <laughs> if you like watching robots smash each other, like that's that's where it's at. Yep. So so if if you can't wait till next Murph to meet Joe in person, you know where to find him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So. Well, awesome, man. Well, thanks, Eric. Thanks for giving me a little time on the mic. I'll Hopefully I didn't bore anyone too any, bad. Anytime. Anytime you want to get drunk and talk to us, I'm down. <laughs> I'm going to go work a little more on that drunk part. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Claudio. Bueno. So who are you? I'm nobody. No, you're not. This. I am not as toasty as you. <laughs> this is Claudio. Hi. Nice to meet you. And no, you cannot have the microphone. I have a very important announcement. Okay. You can have a microphone. Okay. Claudio. Yes. Question, important question for you. I have an unopened yeah. pack of peanut M&Ms. Eight. How many are in here? Eight. Fucking feel it. Is it one? You have the loneliest M&M. &M. No, you have the loneliest M. I'm, <laughs> how many are in there? Just one sad little P. Yes, I am never opening no. this pack of one M&Ms. No, it's an M. It's an M. It's, it, it's it, one M. It truly is an M. Now give me the microphone back. That's all I wanted. That's okay. Great. You're well, thank you very much. This has been great. <laughs> no. <laughs> but hang on. It's the Kirby and Claudio show. It, yeah, it's the Kirby and Claudio show. Okay, it, so this is ours. Uh, 
Hi. This is Kirby, and uh, the only reason I think people promote Enders and other low-quality printers is because they have an affiliate link and they get money back. If they didn't get money back, they wouldn't promote that printer at all. To learn more about this, visit stuffwithkirby.com slash question mark <laughs> MRRF save 15%. Yeah, right, I haven't had that website in weeks. I don't even... <laughs> By, by the way, Kirby is last year's Open RC champion and the biggest detractor of all of my designs from when I worked for Little Spot. Yeah. <laughs> and I hey. still love him. That's good. <laughs> so what happened this year, Kirby? Jim beat me. <laughs> I think it's uh, the Little Spot minis, though, that helped because I had a mini, he has a mini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so minis what are happens next year when you're too tied? I don't know. Hopefully we uh, don't go together against each other in the first match. That'll be... So... <laughs> oh, God. So, Claudio. Sir. You and I have been doing this Smurf thing for a whole lot of years. Forever and ever. You were at my first Smurf. You were at my first Smurf. And together, we made beautiful Rep Rep Babies? Yes. <laughs> did you sit in a tree? Yes, that's I-N-G. Yes, we did. No, we, we sat, sat in a tree extruding. We sat in a tree E-X-T-R-U-D-I-N-G. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Claudio, meeting, meeting Claudio, like you changed my career. You and changed my career. All these people changed my career. Yeah, me meeting yeah. meeting everybody at yes. my first Murph changed my career path. I I had a conversation with my boss, and they were like, "You're gonna stake your career on this weird 3D printer you found at this festival <laughs> at a fairgrounds in Goshen, Indiana." And I was like, "Yeah, nice staking it. That's like, awesome. I I believe in this open source company. I'm gonna fight for it. I That's awesome. I'm staking it. Thank you. And." Uh, you know, a few years later, I quit my job to work for them. And then, you know, wonderful open source 3D printers happened. Sorry. And yes. it's been amazing. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. And, and Claudio not only does wonderful open source 3D printers, but he also helps run a makers or helps run a makerspace yes. in um, Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, Mid-South Makers, we're out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. If it wasn't for Mid-South Makers, I wouldn't have had the job that I had. Yeah. It's, you, you, you mingle, you meet the people, you learn about fun new projects, you collect hobbies, and then those hobbies eventually turn into jobs sometimes. Sometimes? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Rep Rep yes. is the reason for all of this. Yes. And it's kind of crazy to think. Yeah. Hey, I did a thing. Do you want to do a thing? I'll try a thing. And it just grows. And it, it just keeps getting better and better and better. I was told you guys have uh, root beer on tap. We do. It's in the Makers on Tap booth right next to my tool changer. <laughs> is that all it's on there? Is it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that alcoholic in another tap? No. Is it Spreckers? I don't know. Oh. You uh, can buy Spreckers in a keg. Well, there's root beer. You can try it. All right. Go for it. Soda machines are all gone. So... <laughs> The centrifuge just went to hell. <laughs> I love this show. This is the best show ever. <laughs> yes. So, are you guys waiting to be on the podcast? Yeah, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. What do you do you have anything else to say, Claudio? Murph is awesome and you should come to Murph. You should totally come to Murph. Yes. You should rep rap your life. Yes. Yeah. And if you can't rep rap your life, find somebody who's willing to help you rep strap it. Yes. The mic drop? And, Madi, and Claudio <laughs> has finally been on the podcast. This is only the 15th time I've tried. I like the attention. I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you? Hey, I, yeah, my I, name is Cannon Reeves. I'm with More Technologies, so startup out of Arkansas. There you and, go. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so we make a 3D printed robot ecosystem. We've got a Slenderman looking humanoid here. This looks like it's made out of dowel rods and 3D printed parts, and I see a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I was I was looking at your project earlier today, and like in, in my head, I was like, I bet he's like, I love my project, I love my project, I do not <laughs> like my project anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, all the parts are uh, 3D printed, wooden dowels are snapped together. We we wanted to create a robotics platform that you could either 3D print or buy the parts at Walmart. Okay. So we're focused on teaching kids how to code, how to 3D print their own parts, and basically how to create technology, not just consume it. Nice. Yeah. So exciting. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we actually just launched in Kickstarter, and we're I don't know, just getting started, really. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, what is uh. So your Kickstarter is the main place for uh, people to find your project? It is, it is. Okay. Yeah. Will it be open source or anything at the end? Yeah. So the way we're, we're still figuring it out, but we're going to have our own platform that has all of our part files. Because like okay. we want to teach you, and we want you to be able to print your own and like iterate it, go past it. We want to build a community of people that contribute the things they design to this platform. Okay. And so in reality, everybody has access to this toolbox of all these awesome parts that people have created. Excellent. Yeah. Nice. So I see, I see an Arduino, and I also see a Raspberry Pi as, as part of this. So like, what, what's going on? Yeah, so our main kits are Arduino right now. Okay. You could strap on a Raspberry Pi, micro bit, we've done little bits, anything you want. Uh, the key is that it's all just really simple mounts that interface and snap on. All right. So the point of the Raspberry Pi, I was going to do some eyes with NeoPixels, but it ran out of time. So story of my life. <laughs> story of Murph. Yeah. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me. Story of Murph. Story of Murph. Yeah. <laughs> This is this is my sixth year. This is the first year I've had a printer working on Friday. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah we, story of Murph. Well, yeah, we got here on Friday night at like nine o'clock exactly. Could not get a table, so we're like, all right, we're just gonna walk around. So yeah, that's that's been our day. Uh, is, is this your first RepRap Fest? Yeah, first RepRap Fest. So I'm a student of Nick Seward, and uh, he kind of oh, got me into 3D printing and all that, and. Now I'm in college and came back up here with him. Nick. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> He's Nick. a genius. Like, oh, my God. I, I hope to get him on the podcast tomorrow. What was it like being taught by that guy? Like, uh, <laughs> it was incredible. So, uh, you know, I did robotics with him a lot, and uh, he would give me a lot of design freedom to just, like, make something, you know, come in and just tear it apart, but in, like, a really constructive way. Yeah. Uh, but it's just incredible the things that he comes up with. I, I don't know how he thinks. I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, that guy blows me away constantly. Did you see Wheelios? Yes. It's awesome. Yes. It's we, awesome. Wheelios is a, we, we talked about this on the podcast a few weeks ago when it was released on Hackaday, but Wheelios yeah. is a scara arm at an angle, and it's, it's the Z-axis, I guess, is it's on wheels. Both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's weird. It, it just drives around in prints, and it's it's crazy. So, yeah. Um, well, I, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know that I really do. Uh, check us out on Kickstarter, Morebot, if you're interested. Okay. Um, but yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, that was perfect. Joe, what, what have you loved about Murph? I don't know. if I, I went away, and I got a drink made by a robot, <laughs> and it's freaking awesome. So, um... This year, Nick, come talk about what you love about RepRap Fest and RepRap community in general. Where to I, yeah. Right there. Hello. No camera. So what's your well, name again? I mean, there is a camera, but there's not a camera. What's that? What's your name? My name's Nick Seward. Nick? Yep. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Yeah? How do you, what do you like about Murph? <laughs> what do I like about Murph? The people? I don't like the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I like the individual people, but not all of them together at once. Yes. <laughs> I had to go take a nap. <laughs> it, it gets this year got a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's it's, but it's amazing. Like especially like this time, and everybody's like, it's actually the makers. It's actually the people out there doing exactly shit. Like, right. It's fucking dope. I'm gonna let you interview them. <laughs> so. Nick creates the most insane kinematic platforms I've ever seen. I, this is true. You you've done the you've done the the, the Simpsons. Simpson, Wally, Helios, the Cor Lisa, the Corex Z, Corex Z. Yeah. The, all of your and then, and then I have some theoretical stuff that I'm waiting for slicers, like non-planar stuff, like the sextuplicator. Yeah, the sextuplicator, like. Yeah, like, I remember trying to sell the sex run at to Caterpillar as a research project. Oh, like, that'd we be need amazing. to fund this. So, cause, cause this is incredible. Well, well, now the duet can run like ten steppers. So I'm, I'm, I'm building it this year. So, and yes. and I and I have I have a lot of the backbone of the the slicer kind of worked out. This, I was I was pushing Sanjay to make it uh make a uh, their slicer be able to do non planer, but it's gonna be a while. I think it's gonna be a while. Patio is great. But like it needs to work before it needs to do insane things. Like, yeah. 
And it works and, really and I good. Ju- and I just make insane things before I make them work. So, yeah. I, you know. I, <laughs> you're the exact opposite of me. Like, I get <laughs> held back in my head by by software, and you're like, I'll just write the kinematics. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just make it. It's fine. Um, so what like what else is in your head? Like, so you, so you did the I wheel. I mean, else. every time you make one thing, like, you get two more projects. Right. <laughs> At least. Yes. Uh, the Wheelios was just more of a, a student that was working on the infinite uh, printing. I'm, I'm not I'm not super into it, uh, but I do want to work on Helios. So that's that's the that's pr- pretty much the new 2D arm. Okay. Um, for the the next version of the Helios. Nice. So. Hey. So, anyways, I call it Wheelios just to have it call it something. But where, where are you? Are, are you publishing designs still? Like everything was going uh, to I, Google I, Plus I, for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. Now, Google, I was, Plus, Google Plus, Plus was my go-to, and then uh, so I'm gonna start doing YouTube and okay. And th- then if I uh, have a someplace I dump it outside of that, I'll just make sure it's published on the YouTube channel. Uh, have you seen Maker Forms? Maker. Uh, so Maker Forms, it, a guy uh, apparently is here. He took all of the Google Plus communities that are dying okay. and then turned them into discourse forms. Oh, cool. And imported everything. So all the stuff you've posted to Google Plus is in Maker Forms already. That's and when nice. you make an account, all of your stuff like reassociates with you. Huh. I'll yeah. go check it out. Yeah. It's pretty great. I was gonna have to back up stuff in <laughs> Google Plus tomorrow. Yeah. So <laughs> that'll save me a that'll be s- <laughs> So like that's that's pretty exciting, but like, yeah, yeah. So, do you have anything you want to add? Like, love for Rep Rap community, love for Rep Rap Fest. Anything in, in particular? <laughs> Not anything particular. Yeah, Rep Rep Rap was so inspiring. Whenever I I, don't know, I just started, like I don't know, like seems like not too. It seems a little long time ago, but it's really not that long. No, no, not not. <laughs> when did Rep Rap get reality. started? Two thousand five ish, two thousand six. Two twenty. What Rip Rap project? Like. No, I think it's 2006. Yeah, I mean, like, we're, like, just past a decade on the Rip Rap Project, and, like, we have an event that where people come internationally, too. Yes. I mean... Lots of people come internationally, too. I mean, it's... it's like, Adrian, like, he's got, he, got the, he got the magic sauce, and it's viral. We got it. Like, yeah. we're here. We've arrived, I think. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, Awesome. Thank you for jumping in. No problem. <laughs> he was literally walking in the door, and I'm like, "No, you need to come now." <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Burp, burp. All right. So, what were we talking about before I so rudely interrupted? No, you I with? wanted I wanted to know what you loved about this place. What do you What do you love about everything that's going on here? So, I, I said this a couple times. I start planning for Rep Rap Fest on Rep Rap Fest Day Negative One. Like we're gonna drive home uh, tomorrow, and I'm gonna be talking about what we're doing next year. Um, yep. my, my whole year revolves around this event, and my, it drives my wife insane. <laughs> um, but like, this is an event where I get to reconnect with my friends um, and people that have helped make my career, and people that have helped to make me who I am today. And like, I've never met a more open community uh, of people who are willing to embrace everything. Yeah. Um, and also criticize everything in, in a very constructive way. <laughs> no, um, it, it really is. It's like the coolest group of people, like everybody coming over and being like, hey, I want to help you design this. Or, hey, you should look at this in your next in your next build. Like yeah. so many people who are just like want to push you to be even better. Yeah. And that's what's so cool. Like everybody just wants this to be the next big thing. And so they're so willing to help each other to make it even better. Yeah. And like um, this year... You know, I actually had a printer that worked, yeah. which was exciting. I, I got to spend time to actually talking to people. That was that was really nice. Uh, so this year I brought uh, the Prusa SL1, and it just hung out because uh, I didn't feel like messing with the resin the whole show. Uh, but well, then we got smell. <laughs> yeah, and, but I successfully got a Makers on Tap goblet to yeah. print. And uh, that was my first full four-color tool changer print. And I'm just floored that it worked. And it, it worked well. Like, it worked really well. It, we were, we were kind of scared leaving it overnight. But, like, and all, I, I came here early in the morning and saw it still going. We waited a couple hours, and it was done. Yeah. And it was awesome. Like, and it, I, I printed all Snow Labs filament in is this beautiful gold and uh, the sublime green from Michael Hackney's 
uh, Sublime uh, blog, and then Louise Driggers. Uh, uh, I can't remember her color that they sell it. I think it's Midnight Black. Yeah. It's like a purple sparkle. And it's beautiful. And uh, if you guys buy those colors of PLA, uh, they both receive, receive some of the proceeds to help push their efforts in 3D printing farther. And they're both wonderful people. We're hoping to have them on the podcast still this weekend. Um, yeah, the, 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 this whole thing, I just, I love everybody that, that comes to this and, and puts so much time and love and work into their their printers and their prints and their contributions back to the community. There's there's yeah. nothing else like it. No, absolutely, man. So it's it it's been an incredible weekend. It's been an incredible night. Yeah. And so much just happened and it's like I just it, you get to that feeling, it's like I just can't already wait for next year. I yeah. I I know how you feel, man. I can't wait for Earth, East Earth, Coast Rep Rap Fest. Yes. Uh, There's so many people talking about that, and I'm like, it's got me really excited. I'm like, ah, maybe I actually do need to think about going now. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be a great time. Everyone should come. And, uh, yeah. yeah, like, I think we're good. Let's, let's see if we could get like any of these guys. Hey, Tim or Ryan or Josh, would you like to jump in? All, why... Okay, so there's Josh on the far left of me, there's Tim in the middle, and there is Ryan on the right. And all three are RCL members, they're key members of the makerspace that keep things running. And there have been staples of RepRap Fest for the last two to five years. So, why? Why do you keep coming? Why do you keep putting the effort into this? Why do you keep doing the insane trailer trips with me? Why? The after parties. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good answer. Like, but it's not just, it's not just no, the it's beer. Not. It's, it's, it's everything. It's community. It's time away. It's time with your friends. It's time to make new friends. It's time to see new cool stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh. It's, it's, it's time. It. If it's not in the microphone, it's not recording well. But uh, <laughs> the windscreen. No, it's, it's time. It's the weekend. You get to hang out and learn stuff and see people and shirk all the rest of the responsibilities in your life. Yeah. Josh. Because I have a printer. <laughs> no better reason. <laughs> free spool filament. Free spool filament. We drive to Indiana for one free spool of one pound filament of PLA. <laughs> That's a great reason. It's it is way more than that. Like I remember the first year. Is this year number five, I think, for me. This is my yeah. This is five for you. Yeah. This is six for me. Seven yeah. for the event. And it was one. It was like first off, you like the first year. It was so overwhelming, and it was like what. A third of this, maybe. Oh man, like a sixth. Yeah, and it's like one thing coming back year after year. It's just like one. It's really cool to see all the things that people are doing, even if it's something that I'm like totally not into. Yeah, it's still like really cool just to see the various things, and it's kind of like morphed even beyond just printers. It's not just printers. It's the community. It's the kind of like bouncing ideas off of the people that you've like really. It's like fast friends that you get to see once a year, but and you may you know encounter them online and things like that. It's just yeah. I mean honestly, more than anything, Make, putting faces with names. Yes. Like, yes. That's very huge. Much so yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So that's that's what brings me back year after year and everything Tim said. Apparently, <laughs> Tim wants to fight a bar still, so there's that. Uh, everything both of them said. And then I'd like to add, no, it's, uh, what I like about it is it's an outlet for creativity that um, I knew nothing about a couple of years ago, and it's really great to see what people come up with. Like, it's tangible objects. You know, I do software stuff. It's really cool to see, like, things you can hold and touch that are generated by the people here. Yeah, yeah. And, for me, again, like this is the first year I've really spent a lot of time here, but 
it kind of recharges my batteries in being interested in this. Like, you see what other people are doing, and you're like, that's cool. I hadn't thought of that. I want to go explore doing something like that. Yes. So I really like, um, I don't know, I like drawing on the, uh, the things that other people are doing and just, you know, thinking of new cool things I want to do. Awesome. Rep Rat Fest, Murph, all of the things. All of the things what, that what, are... What's your review of this weekend, the community? Okay. Who so are you? Who, yeah, who am I? Who, uh, who is this froggy guy? Yeah. Uh, uh, the froggy guy that you're speaking with now, uh, <laughs> my human name is Jeff Cole. What is your alien name? My, <laughs> well, I don't have an alien name that I know of. Um, what's your internet name? My, uh, some people may know me as a alphanumeric version of Jeff or Jeffrey. Um, so some people, you may be connected to it. I think you are. Um, but now, as of this year, 2019, at the end of 2018, I became an entity called Orthographic Audio. And Orthographic Audio is the culmination of a, uh, let's call it a life work intersection. Uh, nice. Previous professional experience and creative uh, uh, exploration in sound. Uh, orthographic Audio makes 3D printed speakers, mainly focusing on load uh, enclosure design and and they're absolutely beautiful. Hey, thank you. Absolutely hey, beautiful. Thank you. thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And so earlier today, we, we connected over our past of car audio and how it drove us to our professional lives, yes. which was super fun. Yeah, it was interesting <laughs> tangents. And um, I'll tell you what, that's one of the things that I'm exploring in, in another phase of my adult life. Uh, and... and Finding the things, finding those connections along the way and creating a product that's engaging uh, not only for, I guess, me as a creator right now because I haven't shared these things yet. Right. Um, I was just, I just have come from being a slightly accosted about that. But oh. hey, guess what? Oh, um, um, not shocking. Guess what, folks? Uh, it's worth the wait because I'm working on getting it exactly perfect. Yeah. To uh, to quote uh, one guitarist from a band that some may or may not know. Yeah. One one uh, Robert Weir. I, I'm 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 oblivious, but Aaron's nodding like he knows. I'm nodding like I know, but I know. Most of <laughs> most people know him as Bob. Oh no. Oh no. It's only eleven fifteen. We, anyway, they're, car, they're car calling. Act. They're calling last call, like uh, as if Murph has become some sort of. Uh, I, we'll we'll figure that out when we're done recording. So carry on. Okay, so uh, where were we uh, before uh, we? You we were hit, being accosted for not sharing your oh, files. Oh yes, yeah, so so the files, the files are becoming sort of this last component, um, where. I found the development of this project aligning a little bit more with a finished product rather than a kit. Okay, okay. Up until now. Uh, so I came to Murph with some concepts that start to align better with a kit based or a print yourself option for a pair of speakers. Okay. It's something that's more accessible for more people with, that can print on a wider variety of printers. Uh, with a smaller form factor, and that's that's been something. Um, there are a lot of larger printers that are coming around. Yeah. However, entering into a print that's going to go through a very large amount of filament and take a very long time is not for the faint of heart. Yes. Um, I totally agree. Um, financially speaking, um, I'm I, I'm cautious here. I don't want my goal is to not set people up for failure. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that I've really been exploring recently is flow versus speed. Okay. And so there's a lot of good discussions happening online right now. It's been really engaging, especially since the fall of 2018, mm -hmm. of getting into 
that discussion. And it's, it's really exciting to talk about this thing that it's been there all along for all of us, no matter what type of yeah. software we use to cut these models into the slices and oh yeah, trying to avoid tangents there about the software. Yeah, uh, but flowing the molten plastic is as fast and as evenly and is like oh. As somebody who's been experimenting with hot and weirdness for three years, I get it. I get right. it. And we've talked about it a lot on the podcast of my stupid experiments with hot ends. But like making grams of filament flow as quickly as possible. When you start measuring your prints in grams per minute, like you know you're getting legit. And with your prints, you're definitely doing that. Because so, you're doing full like six and a half inch speaker enclosures, which are big. Right. Yeah. And, so um, I had a I had a pair that exist as these one-offs right now. Yeah. Uh, they took about forty-eight hours to print this one piece, but they were horrible to assemble because they were one piece. Yeah. And but they're, they're beautiful. Hey, it, it worked out. I, I proved a point that was like a personal goal. Yeah. And then I was able to learn from that experience, and I and and that's the other thing. And it's it's cool to see other, um, I, I guess the three D printer Im, 3D printing influencers out there acknowledging failure as the learning experience and coming from this, uh, learning the whole process from the ground up as a student yeah. uh, from an, I guess what would be considered now like an archaic ancient printer. Um, you're, it's, you're using a Mendel Max, right? Now I'm, I'm, uh, I've modified a what is currently called a Mendel Max 3, but that printer started as a Mendel Max 2 okay. and it was torn down to all the bits and pieces to become the Mendel Max 3. After MRF 2018, I expanded the Z axis okay. to go to 440 millimeters. And then uh, uh, Maker Toolworks released a linear rail upgrade kit that I uh, did some of it from them and then some of it on my own for the Z portion of this. And uh, saw some. Im I've seen some improvement there, and that's what I showed this week okay. with the the larger units, and then all the concepts okay. came out of that. That's awesome. Like, I, I love seeing really functional art pieces come out of the rep rap community, which is what you're creating. Right. Like, squeaky boxes are traditionally square and boring, and yours are very geome geometrically uh, organic. Um, and just wonderful. Can, so, I, can I can I drop a like a since <laughs> since I'm now like a business entity? Can I oh, drop yeah. a marketing thing on you? Yeah, go ahead. It's it's a view outside the typical box. Yeah, that just drops some radio voice on you too. It's excellent. Yeah, so orthographic audio sound <laughs> you design. A, you have a great radio <laughs> voice. Hey, it, that's where I came from, you know? So I've been around studio monitors and, and that's what those larger units are. And um, looking at this and then scaling it down, those smaller things that you saw are the concepts to get that same energy from a studio monitor into something that can live on a desktop. And a lot of makers out there are, are working in, in relatively small, spaces. I've talked to some college students um, and actually some students that are going off to college soon and looking at solutions for dorm rooms. Right. And I was in that space once. Yeah. Um, granted, this was some time ago. And so I went off with the rectangular prism uh, made of wood. Uh, it yeah. was, they were ugly, but, but it were. was that learning yeah. curve. And, and so there's a lot that came from that that came into this along with a lot of the other professional experience along the way. So it's uh, it's a it's a exciting time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, to put some personal things tie tie that together. Agreed. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. you know. And uh, you know, there's that excitement uh, we talked mentioned the car audio thing. Mm -hmm. And there's um, something about turning 16 in the United States and you get the wheels, right? <laughs> and you put giant and, subs and, in the back. Right. And you need and, the beats. And, and, I, and, I, and I know this becomes definitely like a dude-oriented thing where, okay, you have to have these speakers in the trunk. And then at that time, 
uh, your parental units are like, what are you doing? Uh, you're, 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 right, yeah. exactly. And, and we've all been there, right? Uh, this trip for me, I come back to kind of my home region. I grew up in Michigan and uh, uh, I'll, I'll share some personal on this one that uh, I visited my folks before coming to Murph. And the second I took these things out of the box, uh, my mom got out the camera phone, or you know, and was taking pictures of these things and sending sen sending them to her friends. And it was this thing where, had this been 20 years ago, it would have been the exact opposite. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I get it. Oh, I get it. So, so it's, it's cool. So, yeah. anyways, uh, totally we we've had we. It's not getting what you do. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. But, so. but cool, yeah. Uh, th thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for ha thanks that. for being on. It's cool. We could we could talk about so many more tangents. Oh my god! So I'm tangential, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> we we need to have you back on the podcast as a whole time. episode. Yeah, find find a tangent for me, please. <laughs> you know? and, and then I'll we're the go. tangential podcast. Like, we have a topic hey. and we just like dive right off the end of it, and then. It, then we're at the end of our limits and we're like well i guess this is the end of the podcast maybe we'll talk about our topic next time like hey, cool. <laughs> cool so uh I'll, so i'll wrap it up here yeah. uh i'm jeff cole i i'm the designer and owner of orthographic audio awesome follow follow along on instagram yeah uh orthographic underscore audio Perfect. on instagram because they don't let me do dashes yeah the website's orthographic dash audio.com uh you can sign up now for some email updates perfect i'm, I'm putting together some Sp spotify playlists can't let go of the radio programming background <laughs> yeah telling yeah. stories in a new way i added an iron cat yeah that was my song it was iron cat yeah so <laughs> i'm looking i'm looking forward that was me i'm looking forward to crafting the story so by, I'm, I'm sure by the time this thing airs the uh the working title of Goshen Comes Alive will, will, will be on Spotify someplace for folks to see and hear. I, I'm really looking forward to uh, oh, yeah. programming a, a list of from all the folks that came by the booth to, uh, over the course of the weekend. So, uh, awesome. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Let, let's let's wrap this podcast up so we can leave. Apparently, yes, let's do that. They, so they shut the lights out on us and. An my uh, my vodka than, is completely gone. What? My vodka is completely gone. And our beer is completely gone. I don't, the bottle is gone. Somebody brought us bourbon, though. The vo the bottle is gone. It well, is not where it was before. Somebody probably helped us like, with I mean, that. It, I love that I helped Murph by providing the bottle of You almost Kirkland, slapped somebody in the face just Kirk now. Kirkland vodka. <laughs> it is now off doing its duty, providing a good time. So, uh, this is this is the end of the Murph podcast. Like, wait, did you talk about what you wanted to talk about? For I talked to some people about some things that I thought was important, which was just why do you people. love it? Why do you love Murph, Aaron? I love Murph because we met so many people doing so many different things in so many different ways, and that is the beauty of it: is that no way is the right way, and we met so many people. Even Making using source control, it's not necessarily the right way. If they don't use source control, they're not doing it the right way. <laughs> Anyways, so many people doing so many things different ways, and it is all right in the way that it was done because they did it. Yeah. The important thing is doing it. Yes. It doesn't matter how you do it. If it's done, that is the right way to do it. The important thing is doing it. And yeah. then source controlling it. All right, Su super friends, powers combined. Super friends, this is the end of the podcast.